Hello, and welcome to the Frivolous and Frugal Knitting Podcast. We are two sisters who share our fondness for knitting, the things that we create, and our love for the knitting community. And we do it all with a little twist of both the frivolous and the frugal. I am Dawn, I am the frivolous one, and in our family birth order, I am fourth of eight. And I'm Penny, I'm the frugal one, and I am the oldest of eight. We just have a hearty welcome to those of you who are returning viewers. We so appreciate you making time in your viewing schedule to watch our episodes, and we are hopeful that you'll glean a nugget or two. And to those of you who are first-time viewers, welcome and our heartfelt thanks. Likewise, we hope you have a nugget or two that you take away from today's episode. In fact, Don, today's episode is episode 23. Woohoo! So, woohoo is right. So if you will grab your knitting, your favorite note-taking device, and most importantly, a sense of humor, we'll get started with episode 23. Take it away, Don. So what's around your neck, Miss Penny? Because you're going to have another personal summer, I think. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Princess Tinks a lot. Um, this is the Rune Shawl by Helen Stewart. This was part of Shawl Society 2. It is a very fun pattern, but I must tell you, anyone who has knit it before will see the glaring error, which I made a design feature. I knit the first whole stripe section wrong. I forgot all the eyelets. <laughs> oh, see, I don't remember that. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And I will tell you that I used, I think it's becoming one of my favorite yarns, believe it or not. It's um, Rowan Pure Wool Superwash DK Round Plump High Twist Fibers. Um, they're in the Kiss anthracite and snow colorways and I knit on a size six. So if you knit this pattern, if you like it, yours will be bigger than mine if you follow the instructions. And it was written for DK? I don't remember. I don't I either because maybe it. I don't did I do that one? No. Dawn, you did all of the well, patterns in the first three, I think. I don't remember. I'm sure you did. And probably gave it away by the way. That would be why you can't remember it, but I'm sure it's in your Ravelry. <laughs> it might be. And then when you were describing that yarn as being round and plump, I'm thinking, <laughs> just describe me it to me. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I like it. Um, and I will say, I've got to know what's around your neck. I like that shawl. It must be a Helen Stewart day. Um, this is a, it's called the Kelso. Okay. Shawl by Helen Stewart. It's a triangle. Um, and it was for a pattern collection she did for the Fiber Co. Mm. So I th I'm pretty sure you and I got this yarn at the Madison Knit In, maybe in 17 if we went. <laughs> that seems so long ago. We went. Yeah, so the yarn is by the Fiber Co. It was the yarn um, that she did in the pattern. And you know, I am a sucker. If I like the actual the cover photo. I like to try to figure out what that yarn is. So uh, three colorways, I think um, loop, lupus, <laughs> that doesn't even sound right. Anyway, you can look on the project page. Um, this Road to China Light by the Fiber Co. is the yarn and it has a little halo yeah. and it is cashmere, silk, camel, and alpaca. Right? So on your frugalometer for fiber, where would you put that? I don't even remember. That's when I didn't pay any attention. I don't even know if that yarn's still made. Oh, okay. Yeah. But it's it's not heavy at all. Now, these aren't my colors. This is a little muted for me, but it goes with a lot of stuff. Absolutely. Yeah, so, yeah, I like it. Um, I don't know why I keep smelling it. <laughs> I don't know if that's yak or camel or whatever, um, or it could be my wool wash. <laughs> it could be. <laughs> yeah, ode to camels. Um, <laughs> get the animal aura or musk. You enjoyed it. Yeah. If I had to guess, it's a eucalyptus or something I'm smelling. 
Ah, well, it's very pretty. I like it. Thank you. It's one I think I'll add to my favorites. Yeah. Um, what you have off your needles this week? Well, um, I have a couple things off my needles, but do you mind if I mention very quickly what Pearl is wearing? Oh, yes. How do I dare forget her? She gets a little bit um, <laughs> affronted when I don't mention her. That's not, that did not even make sense. She just gets a little bent out of shape. Well, that's usually when her arms fall off, but that's the <laughs> Um, she is wearing the Elevation Wrap, and I believe we knit this as one of the mystery manias for Magpie Cottage. Does that sound right? right? Yep. Okay, so it is by, um, actually by Aspen Knits, and the minis I used for this scarf were Hedgehog Fiber Sock, and then the base, which is a deep navy, is a, a more rustic yarn, and it is European, and I don't know how to pronounce it correctly, so just look in my pattern notes for that. Um, on the frugalometer, I gave the fibers a th $3 signs and $3 signs for the pattern. So I think I've um, decided I'm also going to rate patterns on the frugalometer. So for instance, Helen Stewart Shawls, if you buy the whole Shawl Society, they're my sweet spot of about a one or two dollar sign. If you buy them separate, I think I would give them a different dollar sign or a different um, identification mark. So several people now have asked you to explain your frugalometer as far as the dollar signs. Are they representing a certain dollar amount or is it kind of where you are in regards to what you're um, willing to spend? It's more a very individual symbol system. So I set it up because I have, as we all do, for, I think for the most part, we value things differently and we know that values in our mind as a continuum from one to five. So mine's just on a continuum of one to five no dollar sign because it would each of us would assign a different amount of dollars. So for instance, I was thinking about this just um, this morning. Um, there are many people who probably have a desire and an income to spend $100,000 on a sports car. They can afford it. It's not a big deal to them, but perhaps their value system is such that they want to um, achieve another goal or live below their means. So they would never spend that $100,000. That would be a five on their frugalometer. They would like to stay more in that mid-range of $3 signs. So they would choose a vehicle that has a lower price tag, still meets their needs, but it would not be as extravagant as what they want to buy. Now, there are times when I certainly buy yarn that's a five, on my frugalometer for special occasions and patterns that are on a five. But my sweet spot in order to be comfortable with my decisions is usually at that two to three dollar sign mark. So I think everybody can assign those values in your head and I think they may change over time. Sure. Yeah. And yeah, and I think as you and I have talked about, we do that with a lot of things in our life, you know? Right, right. Yeah, so that's what it is. Thanks for asking, by the way. Well, I was asking on behalf of a viewer more brilliant than I. <laughs> <laughs> because you know, <laughs> I just didn't pay that much attention to it. I just kind of randomly assigned, you know, dollar signs. Well, and <laughs> Miss Dawn. <laughs> I mean, frivolous Miss Dawn. <laughs> uh, <laughs> she didn't throw up a forbid sign there. <laughs> oh, too funny. Um, okay, what's off your needles? Well, I finished the um, Ikigai cowl. Ooh, I cannot wait to see it because you said you were going to block it aggressively. I did. So that's true color right there. Oh, Dawn. So I'd call that like a dark denim, would you? Yes. So this is um, Malabrigo Caprino in the Paris Knights colorway. It's um, 80 Merino 20 cashmere. Um, gosh, I blocked it and you can really see that pattern when you block it. Now, yeah. if you didn't want to block it, I think it'd be a little more snug around your neck. So you could easily get this wet again. 
mm -hmm. and tighten it up if you want it. And I did use the pool noodles again. Good. To block it. So, uh, but you can even see just holding it, it's starting to lose its shape a little bit. So it's just that real delightful, squishy, um, fun yarn. I'm tempted to do that Jason's cashmere hat if yeah. I can get more of this yarn. Um, Ooh. Yeah. So I guess in the frugalometer, maybe a three. Okay. I think I said four originally. I don't know. <laughs> three or four. Well, do you even look at those anyway? No, not really. Somebody else told me what it cost. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Here's my visa, you know. Okay. Um, so then, okay, in um, Green Bay, Catherine's plus size store, which is where I do most of my shopping, mm -hmm. um, is going out of business nationwide. And so, I'm, again, oblivious to all those emails that were probably telling me that. <laughs> so I went there yesterday. Oh, look what I got. Oh, a plus size mannequin um, for $4. Oh, darn. Right. For $4? She's, she's got wide shoulders. She's got big boobs. She's got a little pudgy tummy. <laughs> so viewers, I need help because I bought one for Penny too. So our mannequins need help. So they need names. Sister mannequins. Okay, let's put that on the YouTube thread question. What should we name our sister mannequins? Because my suggestions last night were considered inappropriate. <laughs> Imagine that. We tried to give you others. It was during knitting with the aunties night. Um, yeah, we tried to give you other more suitable and they just weren't tickling your fancy. No, they were. But I forget, we were laughing so hard at one point we were crying. <laughs> All of us were crying. Oh my so goodness. That whole mannequin probably doesn't weigh two pounds. So it, she'll travel nicely. <laughs> <laughs> yes, she will. <laughs> so watch out, Pearl. You've got some competition. Um, well, maybe it's time for Pearl to step aside and share the stage. Well, I don't know. That 1970s makeup is quite delightful. Right? <laughs> but um, she doesn't have perky boobs like oh, yeah. Pearl does. So we have to cover those up. <laughs> Um, yes, and I just have to say, I am going to um, say publicly, your mannequin has won the coveted, the coveted symbol of a minus dollar sign on the frugalometer. So well done, my frivolous sister. Well, first they told me $5, but at the cash register, it rang up as four. <laughs> right. You're such a bargain hunter. <laughs> so I, because I do most of my shopping there, I may soon be naked. <laughs> so, that's another whole problem but <laughs> yeah, but we can't tackle in this podcast that would be a therapy session um, <laughs> all right well, i do have a couple of things off oh, yeah. my so sure. i'll be very quickly very pleased with the tilde hat oh yes this is a pattern by inice sang and I knit it in Cascade 128 Superwash. And this colorway is Walnut Heather. And that's being very true to color right here. Just a wonderful cabled hat. It's number 22 in my hashtag 45 hats, 45 designs. And I knit it on sizes six and eight. And I awarded it one dollar sign on the frugalometer, both for fiber and the pattern. So if I can just share with our viewers, I was given an excellent selection by Run Knit um, on uh, Ravelry to create a bundle. So oh, yeah. there is a featured bundle on our frivolous and frugal page in Ravelry. All of our patterns are there so you can see them you will see this is uploaded. I add the new ones as I finish them. And I would encourage anyone who likes knitting with a bulkier weight yarn to use this pattern. That is a, that looked really great on screen. Um, nice, Good. nice it's pattern. Awesome. It was fun. It was my first time to use Superwash 128. Can you, or Cascade 128. I don't know. I don't know if I've, so that is bulky because I always think of Cascade 220. So it's worsted, right? So right. it's a worsted weight. I'd say a light worsted probably. Yeah. So huh, I'll have to look at that. And then I have one other hat off my needles. This is right here. 
The pattern is the Perry, P-A-R-R-Y, Beanie, and it's by Bonnie Mae Blue and Ambria Bishop. Very easy knit. It's knit again in bulky weight yarn. So I happen to have um, a, two skeins of Lion Brand Homespun, and I will tell you I used a skein and a third for this hat. It is the man size hat, but as you can see, it's covering um, Fred's head here. So, oh, I think his name is Mo and Monique, right? So it's covering Mo's face. So I was telling Dawn, I really like the decrease, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it out today. I'm gonna frog it and reduce the number of stitches between the doubled headband and the decreases so it's not so stiff and bulky at the top. It'll be more of a beanie rather than a slouch. It is number 23 in my 45 hats and 45 designers and uses a provisional cast on. So I'm really practicing provisional cast ons with my uh, last. Hats. That looks like it will be really warm around the ears. I think it will. And the son for whom I'm knitting it um, has to go outside and shovel and plow snow. So I think it would be a great hat for him to wear out there. Homespun is machine washable and dryable. So it should be very low care requirements. And I'm anxious to see if it pills. Yeah. Um, I don't know anything about it. I've never knit with it before. So I bought this. I got to say, it was in that tub of yarn I got at a yard, at a estate sale. So that's where it came up. It's not something that I purchased. I'm just using it. So both earn a $1 sign on the frugalometer. The pattern is free, just like the Tilda hat pattern, or Tilda hat, and the fiber was very affordable. So, do you have anything off your needles? I don't, other than that cowl. Okay, well, you're working on big projects. So, what's on your needles? Well, the first thing is I'm working on two big shawls, so unfortunately I'm not going to have a finished finish project for a while. This is the um, Advent Calendar Stole 2016 by Brigitte Koch. This is a class I'm taking at Silver Thimble in Green Bay. And last week, I was up to here. Okay. But guess where the marker is? I go to class on Wednesday and this whole section of mine does not look like this. It looked wonky and everybody else's looked like this. So obviously I did the pattern wrong. Mm -hmm. so right there at class, I just pull the needle out of my project and just frog it back. And this one lady, bless her heart, across the table, you know, eyes got really big, like, why are you doing that? So I went back and knit section four. So for this week, I'm doing sections five and six. So you're just seeing half of section five. These sections are going to be lace again. So if I had to guess, we're going to alternate between lace sections and more textured sections. And this yarn is geranium colorway by a Sulca, Sulca Legato. And so it's, a, I can think, an 80 Merino 20 silk. Um, yeah, I like it. Oh, Dawn, I think that's very pretty. And if I remember in Ravelry, there are several Advent shawls that she has designed. This was her first, I guess, in 2016. Mm -hmm. And they're out now, obviously, through 2019. She, she'll do, I assume we'll do a 2020. Um, first clue comes out on December 1st. It's 12 okay. clues, so it's every other day until December 24th. So. Um, Depending on what's on my needles at that time, I may be tempted to uh, follow that. Um, I've also decided I want a white shawl. Ooh, yeah. you know, with as many dark, deep colors as you wear, I think that could be very striking. So maybe white. I don't know if they all have beads, but um, yeah. So this has been good. I just did a lot of tinking this week. So I am a uh, princess still tinks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm Princess Tinks a lot sister because I did some tinking this week too. Uh, this is like my third week of lots of tinking. So I'm sure there's a lesson in there somewhere. <laughs> um, what's on your needles? 
Um, actually, I have a couple, one, a couple projects on my needles. The first one I just cast on this morning, so you can see I'm only working on the brim. This is the pattern Christmas Bonus. And the reason I selected this pattern, because I shared with you, I selected the patterns and the colors based on the recipient. Uh, this is for a daughter-in-law in -law of mine whose birthday is Christmas Day. So it is knit in Cascade 220 in this deep, deep eggplant color, which is really true. And this is the color for winter jacket. So just starting on it looks to be fairly, fairly straightforward. One of the reasons I chose it was not only for its name, but it is only a charted pattern. There are no written instructions. Oh, wow. I've never done that. So I've used patterns in the past. I can go either direction, but I thought this is a this is going to force me to just hone those skills. So it's being knit on a size eight. It called more for an Aran weight yarn. Cascade 220 is definitely not Aran weight, but I had it and I had the color. So I'm going to improvise, adapt, and overcome. Wow, that sounds very militant. It does. And this is hat number 24 military it is i don't know must have something to do with the way i run my household um this is number 24 in the 45 hats 45 designers and my apologies to our viewers i had promised that i would get not promised i had um said i was going to do my best to start posting on instagram this week i don't know what happened to my week time just fell right through my fingers and I didn't get my photo box set up because I have a son who's going to help me with my photo box. So I am hoping to get that done. And then once it's up and running, I'll post a hat every other day on Instagram um, during the week. And we'll get, we'll get that up and running. What else is on your needles, sis? Well, you mentioned that you were doing two shawls. Here's my update on Melanie Berg's Grand Bazaar. So it's in this book. Oh, oh, oh. Everybody needs like two or three copies. I know. Ooh, and then, beautiful shawls. And then <laughs> I think I have, uh, what is that? Ideas of great, grandiose ideas. When this book came out, I said I was going to knit the entire book. What the heck? Oh, you, oh, how many have you not knit out of that book? Oh, I don't think I'm halfway. So there it is. You can see it's a long kind of scarf. Um, and I am doing it in... Queensland United in the black current colorway. It's a dark, dusky purple. Oh, Dawn. So last okay. week, you can kind of see where I blocked it. And it yeah. hangs so nice, so right there, right? Uh -huh. And then this week, I did not block it because you guys said last night I need to show it when it's not blocked. So look at the backside. <laughs> when it's not blocked, it looks like there's these little uh, protub protuberances or whatever. <laughs> It does. It has lots of little puckers. Oh, little there you go. Yeah. It looks like it's dented or something. Yeah. yeah. Like or, hail damage. Yeah, that's exactly what it looks like. But I'm not even halfway. I'm on the ninth of 24 repeats. I can't believe the amount of tinking I did on this this week. And I use lifelines. So oh, I was using a lifeline every 24 rows for the repeat. I'm doing them now every 12. Oh, and once you get off on this, your eye goes right toward it. And again, you, I don't see it necessarily right away, but when you step back or look at it or somebody says, I think you're off, <laughs> <laughs> that would work. But um, it's still not public knitting for me. And that's what I've been trying to do. And I think lace for me is, even though it's a simple lace pattern, but um, yeah, so I'm not quite through to halfway yet. And I've been trying to do a repeat a day, but <laughs> knit a repeat that has not been happening. Knit a repeat. So you're trying to get through the repeats at least three times in a day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, size five needle. Okay. And On the frugalometer? Oh, uh, frugalometer. Um, I'd give it a three, maybe. Okay. Two or three. And I don't know about you, Dawn. But when I buy a book with a collection of patterns, to me, that's my best value. It is. And you know, some books, like I bought this Stephen West Shawl Evolution book, 
And in the yeah. back of it was a code for Ravelry. So I got all of those patterns on Ravelry too. Melanie oh, no. Berg doesn't do that. And I think the reason may be is when her book came out, some of those patterns were already released. And so um, I, I figure it's just kind of a, a business decision you make. I don't mind the book, so I can, um, because I own the book, I can copy the patterns and write all over them. I try not to write in the book. Right. Um, although I guess it wouldn't matter. But uh, right. yeah, so those, I, neither of those are going to be done next week yet either. So um, I'd say a couple more weeks on both of them. Well, you know, I'm sure that your great deep admiration and fin girlish appreciation of Melanie Berg's brilliance and aesthetic <laughs> will definitely propel you to finish that. Oh, yeah, there's no doubt. I'll finish both of them. But the class is three more weeks, so I definitely won't finish that, you know, for, oh, for three weeks. weeks. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Well, we've learned, haven't we? It's not a race. It's not a race. Yep. So that's okay. And there's some big shawls coming too, so. Um, oh, yeah, after last night. Mm -hmm. Oh, you I know. enable everybody you are around for the record. Yeah. Just say no. no. I have one other item on my needles. Don't grin. I know what you're getting ready to say. <laughs> anyway, this is the little hand turn. It's number two of my six sweet sweaters. Last night during knitting with the aunties, I seamed the sides in garter stitch. I can live with them. It's definitely a skill I need to practice. One thing I liked, I watched Michelle Hunter's, uh, Knit Pearl Hunter's video on seaming and garter stitch, and I also watched Very Pink's video to see if I could dress mine up. Mine looked like theirs. I thought Michelle did a very nice job of explaining it, so I used her technique. Mine looks the same as theirs. What I was missing before that was whip stitching the back. And Michelle Hunter suggests you do that. So I did that to secure that seam. And now all I have to do is pick up stitches and knit the front bands and the collar. And it will be ready to block and then tuck in ends. I'm knitting that in that universal yarn. So, and I got the pattern out of a book, One Skein Wonders. So a number of uh, single, dollar sign both on fiber and pattern very good and uh, hurry up and get it sent while the child's still small uh yes either that or they can use it for their own children you know what i mean <laughs> or might have happened with one of my granddaughters got that christening set they're just a little late <laughs> <laughs> oh. um so i do you have anything else that's on your needles that i might have worked on so this is, um, I tried doing the iris hat and I just could not get it to look right. I'm not so sure I got this looking right, but this is um, the anchors hat by Petite Knits. And again, I think the pattern is fighting the yarn. So I think I'll keep going. Um, I just don't think it will. A solid would have been much better. But this is hedgehog fiber. Um, Sock weight yarn and look at that mohair. So look at you. Yeah, four dollar signs for that, maybe five. Okay. Um, and I think the hat by Petite Knit was free. The anchor. I so. mm -hmm. Yeah. But you can see how you can see the nice ridges here. You're not gonna see those with the mohair. So so that kind of dovetails into what I learned this week, Dawn. You know, we've talked about the ability to step back and look at a pattern and the fiber and make sure they're not fighting with one another. The color. The color is also so much a part of the decision on what you choose. And I'm seeing that with each of my hats, which is why I had to frog a hat. I picked the wrong color. And I noticed it in the pattern, the color, I'm sorry, the picture that the designer put on Ravelry. And for this Christmas bonus hat, I had to make sure, it's by Susan Ashcroft, by the way, that I chose a solid color that would allow the pattern to be seen. Yeah. So spend some time thinking about your color choices, knitters, because they do impact your final project. 
Yeah, and especially if you're trying to do like these two, three, and four color shawls. Yes. How do each of those colors play off each other? Are they going to be next to each other in the pattern? Um, I don't have a good color sense as far as being able to walk over to a wall of color and pick yarns. Somebody, if they can pick them for me and I can put them next to each other, I can tell you if I like them or not. I can't tell you why I don't like them. You know what right. I mean? So they could put some colors in there and I'm like, nah, I don't like that. I can't tell you why is it too warm, too cold. I don't know all that. But um, I admire people who can just pull. So I'm a sucker for kits because somebody's already did that decision for me. Right. Um, can I give you a, a hack on that? Yeah. I will post it in the show notes, but I found a very useful website that describes color theory, how to choose contrasting colors and complementary colors. Uh, two contrasting colors, and then it moves into three and four color complementary colors using the color wheel. And I will add that to our show notes. That's what I'm using. Um, that's what I'm trying to use for our Festival of Stitches. So I think for those of us who don't have that understanding of color theory, it's a great tool. Yeah, so um, speaking of Festival of Stitches, that's our August virtual or knit along with some of the ladies from Magpie's Cottage. And so um, August 1st, so I'm going to cast on, I hope, later today, but I'm using your classic red, black, and white. <laughs> so, <laughs> I know those go together. Um, and you know what? I'm just going to use the colors I like. I always think I should venture off. You know, that, that honey gold is really big right now. I love the color, but not on me. So maybe I can use it to do things like hats, socks, those kind of things where I could either give them away. Right. Um, but I just for a big shawl, it's not worth it to invest in yarns that I know I won't wear because they're right. not um, complementary to my skin tone. Um, here's what I'm learning this week. What's I'm gonna, that? I'm gonna try really hard not to say a bad word. <laughs> Follow the, insert bad word here, pattern. <laughs> Your self-control is very impressive. <laughs> How about sign language? No. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you dare. <laughs> I am telling you, every time I tink this week, it's because I didn't pay attention to the pattern. Now, even in my class at Silver Thimble, handwritten is watch this change, a pattern repeat where you didn't do the entire pattern repeat. I had it handwritten to don't forget to do that. And I still did it. I know. Do you think maybe when we knit with the community, we're just a bit distracted? We're, we're interested in what the people are saying and doing, and those are just benign oversights in the moment. Yeah. Same with this one. I had to think back for this little ridge change. Wow. They tell you exactly what to do on the pattern. That's amazing. <laughs> Follow the pattern. <laughs> Austin would say, I know, Mom, when you're mad because you talk with your teeth closed. That's right. <laughs> I probably spit, too. Well, honestly, if you did that, we'd have to come up with a new name for you because Tinks a lot wouldn't fit anymore. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, and I don't want to be spits a lot. That wouldn't be nice. <laughs> oh. And swears a lot may be appropriate, but not on here. <laughs> Oh yeah, Princess swears a lot. We would like to avoid that. Yeah. Um, if you don't mind, I would like to share quickly with the viewers what's happening at Frivolous and Frugal. Mm -hmm. We are actually this weekend celebrating our second pot anniversary. <laughs> yeah, there was a break in there because life <laughs> happened, right? But this is our second pot anniversary. So, in honor of that, we would like to have you respond to the following question in our YouTube thread for the prize. And this is going to be a very nice gift because Frivolous Dawn is putting it together, which by the way, I so apologize to those of you who are receiving gifts from Frugal Miss Penny. When I see what my sister does, oh my goodness. 
And by the way, we are so tickled, Miss Anne, with the video you sent us when you opened your gift. That was mm -hmm. precious. So here's the question. What shall we name our sister mannequins? Okay, just remember, they're, they're full-figure mannequins, okay? Unlike Pearl, who has 0% body fat, okay? So just think about that. And from that, during Knitting with the Aunties next weekend, Nikki will randomly draw a number and you will win a prize. So can't win if you don't enter. And by the way, while you're in there, please like and subscribe to our podcast if you're enjoying it. You are just sounding so professional saying that. I'm impressed. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and then in the Finish Fixer Frog at Cal, which is happening um, in Ravelry, again, that Things that people are posting blow me away. Sweaters and shawls and socks. And we it was time to do a random draw for that. We do that every other week. And so again, last night um, on our auntie's uh, Zoom, we had Nikki pick another random number. So I think you have that information, Penny. I do. Are you ready? This yeah. episode's winner is... In Your Eyes 54, Miss Debbie from Indiana. She's also a virtual Knit Night participant. Your name was randomly selected. So if you'll just email me because <laughs> you're getting a frugal gift, frugal Miss Penny. If you'll just knit, email me with your mailing address, I'll get that in the mail. In a very quality project bag, by the way. So just make sure it's a new one. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll know if it's not because that white little box that has a place for a label often is missing some printed ink on it. So if I accidentally give you a used one, return it and I'll give you a new one. <laughs> and you know it's going to come in a recycled um, envelope. So just be prepared for that from the get-go. No, they give you free ones at the post office. Dawn, I have a a drawer full of ones that are just begging to be recycled and reused. How can I get a new one? Or thrown out. <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. I have to be true to who I am. Yes, you so do. You'll just see things blacked out, retaped, stapled. <laughs> why it's why does the frivolous and frugal why it why does the frivolous and frugal logo look like the Amazon logo? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, cross it over. Speaking of that, we are having a logo made for us. We so are. See that soon. Absolutely. That's been um, fun. My daughter in law is very, very, very talented. In very. That. Yeah, incredibly gracious, talented. And, and speaking of gracious, may I just give an honorable mention to Blue Doxy Dye Works? Oh, you yeah. You remember, she offered our viewers a code. Um, to order yarn through the month of July. And so I ordered the pink and green colorway. It's in her long hair base. Quick, speedy delivery and shipping. She also added a handwritten note, which was very touching. Um, very nice. From my sister and from her that I need to do that. So that's something I'm going to do. Plus some stitch markers. Are you serious? Do you know what to do with those? <laughs> I'll look up a YouTube video. <laughs> so thank you, Miss Laurel, for um, that code that you provided for our viewers. I appreciate that. And well, that was very gracious. It was very um, gracious, absolutely. No, I can't think of any. Visit our website. Oh, and then don't forget, we have our virtual Zoom next Saturday night, right? We do, absolutely. So as usual, I will post the Zoom logon information about an hour before we begin. We will be live from 7 to 9 p.m. Central Standard Time on Saturday, August 8th. Please join us. We had a delightful time mm -hmm. last week. And this week, we thought maybe that not only would you bring and show the projects that you're working on, even those that you just recently cast off. I thought that was so inspirational last week. But we also thought we might talk about your favorite knitwear designer and why you find um, an affection for that designer. 
So that's what we'll be talking about. It is two hours of nothing but knit talk. So just be prepared for that. We, um, we really just enjoy talking about our fiber arts. Yeah, absolutely. I look forward to that one. So any luck at all, Penny and I will be together. Yes. Yeah, so I'm heading to visit. Um, yeah, so that'll be good. It will be good. All right. No idea where we'll be um, hosting this Zoom session from because our house has limited space. So it may be from the back seat of our car, just so you know. <laughs> yeah. My, my, van. Van. Yeah. my van. That's right. <laughs> Garage, who knows? It doesn't matter, does it? Hopefully not. I'll knit anywhere with you. Thank you. Likewise. All right. Well, I think that's it for today. I think so too. Um, do you want to tell everyone how they can get in touch with us? Sure. We're on all the social media. So uh, most active probably on um, Ravelry, of course. We're in the group. You can just go on to communities or the group tab and type in frivolous and frugal. We're on Facebook and Instagram as well. I know we keep saying we're going to try to bump that up, but <laughs> we haven't. <laughs> and again, don't, don't hesitate to click and subscribe or do the thumbs up. Or if you have any suggestions for us, we love um, getting ideas <clears throat> or suggestions. And Penny includes our email addresses for Gmail, both um, down below here on YouTube, as well as in the Ravelry group. So don't hesitate to um, drop us an email if you have any questions or just want to say hi. <laughs> hi. Absolutely. So thank you so much for joining us for episode 23. We hope that your week is a sweet twist of the frivolous and frugal. Can't wait to see you for episode 24. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.